Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Accenture Interactive. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for Adobe Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Our next guest, Todd Schwartz, who's the global delivery lead for Adobe with Accenture Interactive. That was a tongue twister, great to see you. <laughs> for, Thank you. Adobe, for the Adobe relationship with Accenture Interactive. That's correct. Thank you, global delivery lead. Thank you. That's right. Welcome right. to theCUBE. Thank you. So global, big, big landscape, cloud computing, global impact, delivery, that's hardcore nuts and bolts here on the front lines. Tell us about what you do, what are some of the issues around delivery because that's where the rubber hits the road on all this. Well, that's exactly right. Um, you know, when I think of my role, think of me as someone who's out there working shoulder to shoulder with customers. When it, you know, uh, from a delivery aspect, you know, providing the capability, providing the skills, providing the talent, making sure that we're getting the results that our clients are looking for, and ultimately the quality that, that, that we need to deliver for them. And you guys do a lot of work. I mean, Accenture Interactive, got a great team that sets up all the great ideas, all the new business models, the new tech is here, people process, culture change, all going on. At the end of the day, it comes into your, <laughs> I got to deliver it. <laughs> and then the outcomes that you want. That's exactly right. This is a core issue when people talk about operationalizing um, new things, and sometimes there's change management involved, there's new culture shifts. So this is where we hear a lot. It's not the tech problem, it's the people and the culture can you share your view on this? Because you're on the front lines on this one issue. It's a great point, and I think, um, you know, one thing is standing up technology, and you can sort of get some of the nuts and bolts running. It's another thing to really get our clients and our customers enabled so that they can unleash the power of some of these platforms and technologies. Um, you know, there's a, an entire, uh, you know, journey map on what their own people need to go through from enablement. There is a, a change management aspect around how we get those folks sort of feeling comfortable about that and uh, we often go through a couple of different methods to, to do that. Sometimes we do a two in the box where we'll sort of act with them in the, in the same role. Other ways we'll sort of lead by example and do it and then they'll sort of shadow us and uh, then eventually we just sort of make that transition. Um, in some cases they just frankly you know, outsource it to us, right? And, and we'll uh, take over that sort of feature and functionality or role and position on behalf of our customer and that's okay. What kind of horsepower do you bring to the table? I mean we just interviewed um, Nikki who handles the Accenture Interactive Operations. That seemed like a great power source standing up fast, some, some operational capabilities. What else do you guys do bring to the table in terms of the, the delivery piece? Well, what Nikki and her team do is, uh, is vital for us. So when you think about what I'm out there doing, I'm out there standing up these capabilities, empowering our customers, and then Nikki's with her team and everything we're doing in Accenture Interactive Operations is sort of operating that for that client, right? So once we sort of turn on some of those features and functions, then Nikki's out there with her team sort of running with it and, and, and that multi-year run and getting those customers. So do you hand the keys to her? I do. So you, that's the handoff is that, okay, I got do, it. exactly right. So once we, once we sort of power everything on with our clients, power all that integration on, um, and then we leverage Nikki and her team in many ways to sort of take over that run. So Todd, I wonder if you could talk about the skills, the, kind of the skills gap, if you will, on, on some of the clients that you have, and how are the skills and the roles uh, evolving to execute with some of these new tooling and, and this kind of new process? Yeah. It wasn't like build a campaign and slow roll it out, now it's go, 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 go. Oh, you're absolutely right on that. And I think, uh, not only that, but it's evolving, right? I mean, we data scientists are more important than they ever were. And so all of our customers and ourselves are investing in how we get data science. Because at the heart of it, and if you think about what Adobe's talking about in some of the new products that are coming out, it's about building that data layer, right? And it's about taking that data layer to the next level too around security and permissions. So helping our customers um, sort of get their arms around what it means to manage that data and all those aspects around the view of a customer is critical. Um, even, the, even the presentation tier, you know, Adobe provides all those uh, amazing technologies that allow customers to drive those rich experiences, whether it's on a tablet, whether it's on a mobile, whether it's on your desktop, ubiquitous, doesn't matter. But that presentation tier is just constantly changing. I mean, we didn't have you know, the Angular and the React 10 years ago. Now you have all these other frameworks you have to begin to prepare for. Talk, so talk about the, uh, one of the, the keynote um, yesterday that got my attention was the word, and I love the way it sounds, personalization at scale. Yep. And that's just, just think about that concept for a second, it's mind blowing. We, love, we all love personalization, who doesn't like personalization? Yeah. But at scale, a lot of moving parts, this is in you guys' wheelhouse. Uh, Century Interact, you guys have large scale customers globally. 
What does that mean to you? Because, and how does that happen? Best Buy saw about sending out 40 million emails. I mean, it's insane, or the, the, the personalization uh, experience. What does it mean? Well, when, when I hear something that needs to be at scale, you got to break it down to be as simple as possible. You got to figure out how you make that something super complex and dumb it down to where you truly can scale it, where you can enable people quickly. Um, and sometimes you think big and start small. So often what we'll do is we'll help our customers and say, if you want to do one-to-one -one personalization, we need to be thinking about how we can create content quickly, how we can create art quickly, how we can go and, and operationalize that globally, right? Because many times you need to be working around the clock. So for me, when I think of at scale, it's how do we turn those capabilities on around the globe quickly for our clients. And, and it basically, you need to break it down. So that's the playbook. You go to the customer saying, let's, let's pick some use cases, get some beachhead, get this figured out, make sure it's not a lot of moving parts. Yeah, and, and, and again. New software, maybe customer experience engine, things sort, of that nature. And it sort of starts small. You know, so I, um, you know, I would you know, light up some teams, take some initial use cases, maybe think about how, uh, you know, what are some of those um, you know, initial user journeys, that end-end journey we want to we prove out, and then let's operationalize those, and then we'll build on top of that over time. Let me ask you a question about the Adobe announcements. What's getting you excited here at the event? What are the, some of the hallway conversations and, and uh, conversations after hours uh, at all the different events going on? What are you talking about? What's the top conversation that you're involved in? Uh, for sure, AEP. When you talk about the new experience platform that's coming out and everything around there, uh, to me, I think that's a game changer in the marketplace, and I think it's also critical um, certainly ODI is all mapped in there and all the data, uh, data aspects, but the, the new experience platform that Adobe is investing in is sort of where I think our customers are driving towards and what's required in order to meet the demands of how to secure this data, how to wrap some permissions around it, how to take you know, what we would consider PII and PHI-like data um, and be able to use it in more of their tools knowing that we have the security of, uh, of integrity of What's our What's the customers. impact of your job with the, the customer experience platform? Uh, impact our job is it unleashes all kinds of potential. Uh, you know, it, when, we, when you think about what we're out there helping our customers solution, um, it opens the gamut for us to go and sort of drive those next generation experiences in a much more, you know, I guess, uh, formidable way. Um, you know, I can. Uh, For more capabilities? Faster, oh, absolutely. Faster you know, execution? Uh, ex exactly. It, 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 uh, and what was super complex for me to build now just became a lot easier because now I have a framework and a structure and a platform that they're enabling it. How does it impact, the, in your view, the customer, I mean, sorry, the partner landscape? Because you guys have a lot of partnerships. That's always a key one, obviously. You're here at Adobe Summit. But you, know, you might have some of these little niche providers come in with a nice tool chain, say, hey, you know what, I want to plug this in. The big Accenture Interactive Engine, you guys got a lot of global breadth. You're going to probably get some impact on the ecosystem. How do you see partners? Because if it's an enabling platform, it should be enabling something. So that's going to be a tell sign. What, what's your view on the partner ecosystem? Well, I, I'll, the first thing I'll say about that is I think we're in a unique position because if you look at the scale we have at Accenture, so although I'm in Accenture Interactive, I'm very focused on that digital and building the best experience on the planet, I have this huge engine behind me of broader Accenture that has these capabilities. I mean, you know, what we're dreaming up around how we're working with Microsoft and SAP, well guess what? We already do that too. So I can bring a lot of those vendor relationships and, and experiences and capabilities and bring them right in-house quickly. And when I need yeah. to go out to market and partner, I have those avenues and I can go bring that niche. That so niche like putting Le Lego blocks together now. Yeah. Let's put, make things auto-integrate, well, just put it together, right? And Adobe's continuing to invest in their I.O. and that allows us to integrate and, and, and plug in these things a lot quicker than we ever had before. What's the biggest challenge you see that Adobe and the marketers and, and marketers have in the uh, marketplace? Because a lot of new tech, a lot of great capabilities now emerging. There's, there's a shift happening. Yeah. You know, we've kind of been going slow, you know, yard by yard, move the chains like a football analogy, but now big movement's going to happen, we see happening. We see a shift coming, big wave of innovation. What's the challenge? I, I, definitely two challenges, I think. One, uh, it's just the speed right, the speed in which the market is moving and how do you keep up with that speed and how do you uh, continue to invest in your own people to be, learn it and then two, I think the sheer amount of data, like yeah. the fact that we can store all this data, we have more data coming in than we've ever had before. I mean just think of what IOT is doing to our, our landscape and all the data that's coming in from an IOT and now we can use that as a, as a whole another level of, uh, of sophistication in our analytics and our segmentation and it, that's a tough job, right? That's how do marketers keep up with that? It's uh, it's changing their landscape for sure.
And what about just kind of the, the, the point of view when they get competition that comes out of complete left field, right? That you know, Uber and, and, and Lyft are the obvious examples that get way overused, but you know, the companies are now competing against companies that weren't even in their radar before, that were purpose-built and moving at light speed, to your point. How do you help those legacy, <laughs> those legacy guys kind of take the big leap, take the big step, get to hyperspeed personalization? I mean, one thing, you can't be complacent. I think if you are complacent, you're, you know, one of those small innovative companies is going to slowly eat your lunch. Uh, and so, I think, you know, uh, take advantage of that mindset that those small, you know, incubation type companies are those small things. And, and, and maybe even think about, how do, I, how do I build that same type of innovation within my own halls? And how do I take advantage of how that rapid development and that rapid change? And oftentimes, we're helping our customers go in and, and, and and bootstrap that, right? Start it. Like, let's go inside and let's build a little innovation hub inside your own organization to go and compete with them. Otherwise, you know, it, it, you're going to yeah. see what, you know, like the case studies you just referenced, right? <laughs> you guys are in the driver's seat for sure. I mean, I think this is great innovation. The question that we that came up in our last segment with Jim Lalonde was, you know, he talked about the vendor dynamics. Yes. When you have the world flipping upside down, things have changed. It used to be vendors lead and enable. Now you have apps dictating terms to the infrastructure, kind of as a cloud model. He made a good point, he said, you know, a lot of the transformational stuff is great, but then it fails during integration. And pointing out that they get to a certain point and just crashes, uh, not crashes, that's my word, but he said, <laughs> it, it, this challenges. He didn't, wasn't specific on the outcomes yeah. of, of the transformation, but he said pretty much it struggles and usually doesn't happen. Yeah. How do you see that? Because with now automation, machine learning, now you have agility in a marketing landscape, not just marketing cloud, but you got all kinds of other things. It's like the sales and marketing in there, it's everything. You have agility. How does the integration impact, and how does the delivery impact that transformation goal? Well, and you're exactly right in the fact that when organizations make a big investment in Zobi Technologies, they typically have a lot of other investments in other technologies as well, and so how do you create agility where you've got to plug and play, sometimes more than one, um, and I'm sure Jim talked to you about our customer experience engine and the beauty yeah. of that, right? Where we can go and really bring a framework to our customers and our clients that allows us to take the best of all these, of all these experiences, uh, all these platforms, I should say, to build the best in class experience. And um, that's something we absolutely bring to the table. It's a framework, we've proved it out. And, and frankly, we have a whole bunch of connectors that already exist. So for my mind, when I'm trying to get them to be agility, I bring that type of thing to the table to help them move fast. And I think that's a successful tell sign we see with uh, successful ven vendors and partners and integrators is that you guys took your core competency and wrote software around it and you packaged it up to automate the heavy lifting that, I mean, why wouldn't you do that, right? Well, and, and we <laughs> see know, it in like our customers every day. I mean, I walk into our customers and I'm like, well, they have a little this, they have a little that, then they're going to go and make this massive yeah. invest in Adobe and it's like, they're not going to just discard and retire some yeah. of those things, so we, 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 we attempt to solve that problem for them. That's a real differentiator, congratulations. Jim was great on that. Final question for you, Look, going forward, uh, what are you excited about? What's on your roadmap? What's, what's next for you? What's the next leg of the journey for global delivery? <laughs> well, <laughs> to, uh, to more delivery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, it's, um, it's to continue to build out scale around all of our locations. So when you look at Accenture Interactive, we're you know, obviously a big North America business, but we have businesses all over the globe, and it's to continue to create you know, to meet our customers' demands as they expand yeah. global, it's how do we deliver local, yeah. and how do we deliver around the clock for them. And so for me, it's about building those capabilities everywhere you go, South America, Australia, New Zealand, in Eastern Europe, and, uh, and making sure that we create the same yeah delivery patterns, and we leverage the same assets and accelerators, like the customer experience yeah. engine, in all those places. And one final question, as you look at the arena of all the vendors competing, uh, who, what's, the, what's the winning formula, what's the posture that you see that's a successful vendor as they integrate in this kind of these journeys and these experiences, what's successful uh, makeup of a, of a successful supplier to customers? From a, from, a, from a technology yeah, provider? You look at all the players, you got Microsoft, big partnership with Adobe, you got Amazon, you got all these, you know, Mars, MarTech stack is littered with logos, consolidation's happening. There's a lot of battles, battles on the field right now, a lot of yeah. players fighting for, for their future. Well honestly, I, I think those who are going to make it as simple and as easy to empower their people to use, um, is going to be the winner. And uh, I think you're, you're seeing that certainly at, a, at Adobe, but there's a lot of other formidable vendors out there who are creating very simple techniques to go and light this up. The, the more you can empower a business person and a marketer to do self-service, 
the bigger win you're going to have. And to your point about scale, simplicity. Yeah. Yep. Todd, thanks for coming on. Great insights. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for sharing the, uh, your commentary. You. Appreciate it. Todd Schwartz here on theCUBE, global delivery lead uh, for the Adobe account for Accenture Interactive. Stay with us for more day two coverage after the short break. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back. <laughs>